I'm thrilled to say I got to speak to Deborah Goodwin about being an authentic writer. Before we get to that, here's a little segment about her. And by the way, at the end, there'll be a link to a bonus segment with her where she talks about writing screenplays and vampires. Deborah Goodwin is a writer, director, and producer, and she actually started out as an executive developer and as an actor, starring in plays and appearing in music videos. I kid you not, she's been involved with almost every aspect of this crazy industry. She's also an IFP and Film Independent Lab Fellow, and I met Deborah through Film Fatales. We were co-chapter leaders for a few years, so I got to know her pretty well, and I can tell you that she understands how hard it is to navigate through this industry and how important it is that you have supportive people around you who really get you and where you want to go. She's going to come on the show, and we're going to talk about her journey through various parts of the industry, how she's branched out to move her career forward, and more. First of all, welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. Yay. Um, my my former co-chapter leader of Film Fatales. I, I found out recently, only accidentally, because you told me <laughs> that you were an actor originally. I mean, maybe you still act. I don't know. But you started out acting, and... You were actually in a music video that I know very well, and I totally didn't realize it was you. So fabulous. So I'd just like to hear about your journey, starting there, going forward, whatever you want to talk about. I think acting was just a natural place to study because I, my background's in theater. And um, so I studied in Montreal, classical theater at Dawson. And because everyone else was focused on a career as an actor, it didn't occur to me that acting might only be one part of what I was going to do, or maybe I wouldn't even do it at all. <laughs> and, and then my high school drama teacher, actually, um, she sent a recommendation to AMDA, American Musical and Dramatic Academy, for a scholarship for me without my even knowing. And they selected me. So it kind of was they're giving me a scholarship, I'm going. And I wanted to go to New York. So that really was it. I didn't give it a lot of thought, sad to say. I just, I just went, went where the sort of the opportunity was. And it was a wonderful place. It was quite diverse and quite rigorous. You know, it was dance, music, and, and acting. Um, and you didn't really have time to think about it. You just, you were in classes all the time. I also loved musical theater. I had always loved musical theater. My mother was a huge musical theater um, fan and that really cemented kind of my love of musicals. So it just felt like a perfect job, you know, to have. And, And also I wasn't really thinking of it as a job. It was just school. It was school with friends and learning all these things and then suddenly it was a showcase and it was agents and suddenly you were you know sort of like oh this is like now I'm supposed to like go and do this for real um and I guess I was fortunate to have the musical theater background because you could get work I actually you know worked and did theater and was on the road now we're not talking glamorous, fabulous <laughs> shows. We're talking road trips, Biggs and Rosati. I remember them very well. Um, so they did these touring shows of kind of truncated versions of classics. And so you're busting around the South doing this in high schools and colleges. And, um, you know, it was, it, you made a lot of friends. You met a lot of people. You got to travel. And then you would come back and audition for commercials because that was the thing. And for the Cosby show, because that was the only (laughs) show that was shooting in New York that had black people. Um, So you would repeatedly audition for the Cosby show for any, you know, guest roles. And you would go out for a lot of commercials. My agent said, you know, you should take an improv class. And I took a wonderful improv class with... um, it's not coming to my mind at the moment, but it was a very, everyone wanted to take this, this class. She was amazing. And she talked a lot about finding, you know, branding yourself. And that's, I'd never heard anything about that. And that was, you saw the people who made it coming from the East coast, they found a way, they found a, 
a brand, a thing, their, their thing. This was all before we had Instagram pages and we could all create our own thing. Um, and so a persona, if you will, you know, that worked for them, especially in auditions, especially if you weren't great at auditioning, which auditions always terrified me. And so I liked this idea that she was talking about, that you could sort of create this persona that you would then be at your auditions. Um, but that aside, she was like, you know, I said, I don't know my brand. I don't, you know, I, I don't know who I am. <laughs> and maybe that's the problem. And, and it was, you know, it was the problem because I was, they didn't know where to put me. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't this, I wasn't that. And, um, and and I sounded older than I looked and I had, you know, it was all just wrong. You know, it didn't have a, have a like neat pocket. Um, and, and so she was really, you know, she was really instrumental at sort of, at helping me think about myself, think about what, what qualities I um, could bring into these things. And I never used them to, for acting, but I did go on to use them for everything else, you know, because you still have to pitch and you still have to do, you know, many, many things that have nothing to do with the actual writing part <laughs> or the filmmaking part, the getting the money and the meetings and the, you know. So all of that, I, before I had a certain confidence in who I was, she really helped me figure out here's here are some things you can lean into to feel confident, even if you're not, <laughs> basically. Finding your brand is really just getting in touch with kind of who you are, right? But then I guess my next question for you then is how do you bring that to your writing, to what you want to put out to the world? Because obviously every script isn't going to be the same, right? You might want to write about something that doesn't have to do with whatever your brand is, but somehow you're bringing yourself in. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's, that's a, it's definitely a journey and a process because part of, you know, writing so much um, of it is, you know, is mastering the craft of doing, but at the same time, you're uncovering your own voice as a storyteller and that, you know, can be beaten out of you if you if you aren't actively um, trying to make the two things one thing. In other words, the craft part and your personal vision and voice, so that they you are not trying to just become a formula of of this works and that works. Um, so, so yes, I do. And my first screenplay was very, very personal. It was, a, you know, it was, a, it was really about my family um, and, and fictionalizing myself in this uh, multi-generational story. And of course, you know, the truth becomes fictionalized. You take the things that are, you know, that work. But the mother-daughter story at the center of it was definitely based on my, you know, my own mother and, and grandmother. And, and so that's really the script that got me in the door. But I think in that process, it is an uncovering of who you are. It is an uncovering of what your, your strengths are because your, your um, intuition leads you towards your natural thing. And a lot of times, if you're not strong enough to recognize that on your own, you can easily be swayed by other people saying, no, 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 that's not where you need to, you know. Um, so, and I think particularly uh, when people are trying to, um, they're trying to get you to do things they want you to do. <laughs> you know, so, so they're like, right, no, no, right. no, 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 look over here. It's, it's, you look know, here so again. this is a constant, I think it's actually a marvelous process of continuing to value who you are and figure out who you are through the art. I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, if it gets misdirected, you're, you're still gaining something. Where it can be, you know, tragic is when people are just completely 
destroyed by someone, you know, crushing their sense of who they are and not and not being able to recover from that. And I have seen that with actors, especially. That was also a huge, um, you know, uh, played a huge part in stepping away from from that side of things because just the way that you're treated, it was just like, I don't want to be treated that way. <laughs> um, right. That's why it's great that you have a theater background and you have an acting background because you're going to treat actors better because you know better. Um, and I, I, you know, sometimes people talk about, oh, somebody's all over the place. They do, they were acting, they were writing, they didn't, yeah, yeah, yeah. they don't know who they are, but that's actually to me totally backwards. I think the more you do, the more you discover who you are. The authentic part is, is the key thing. That development is in, in all art forms. I totally agree with that. I, it's interesting because I think that is what holds people back. Like not to keep rehashing my youth, but like when I, <laughs> I'm getting old uh, when I was young, but when, when I wrote my first screenplay and I was trying to write that romantic comedy, which of course was a disaster. I started to just write these bizarre scenes of how I feel in situations or felt in different situations. Cause the, the first film, which has a lot of issues, I'm not saying it's perfect, but it jumps genres. So suddenly she is in like a romantic comedy, like dating scene, but then she's suddenly in a film noir movie because I, that's how I feel all the time. I feel like I exactly what you're talking about. And I, I had this fear of just like putting that out there. Cause maybe everybody's going to think I'm crazy. Maybe I am schizophrenic. Like, I don't know. Right. And, but that's how you find yourself. It's just by putting it out there. So how do you, I, I know there's not like a fixed formula for this, right. But how do you get past your fear? Like, how do you know when you're hitting a, a, a writer's block because it's your fear? And when are you just hitting a block because you're just hitting a block? Cause maybe you've been staring at your screen too long. So how do you, I know there's not like a fixed formula for this, right? But how do you get past your fear? Like, how do you know when you're hitting a, a, a writer's block because it's your fear? And when are you just hitting a block because you're just hitting a block because maybe you've been staring at your screen too long? Yeah, it's a really good question. And I think you have to write your way out of wherever you were at. If that means revising something that's at a more complete stage or tweaking some element of another project that lets your brain rest on the thing that's bugging you and allows you to still be productive. I think the worst thing you can do to yourself is just sit and stare at the vacancy, the thing that's missing or that you're missing the point of. Minds are like cats and they need distractions anyway. If all that fails, you can go cook an elaborate meal. Some of my husband's best dining experiences at home come out of my writer's block. <laughs>